Hello and welcome to this new series on specifically Named Entity Recognition, or NER. Now in this video series, we're going to be covering a lot in the next probably 13 videos. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to NER in general, what it is, how it works, so that we can kind of have a basis understanding moving forward. In the next video, we're going to be talking about uh, gazetteers and rules-based named entity recognition. Now, a lot of people are moving away from rules-based NER and opting more for machine learning NER, which I'll talk about in just a second. The reason for that shift is because of the way in which machine learning can generalize on unseen data or unseen texts. However, rules-based NER is still very useful for very specific problems. And in order to understand when you should use machine learning NER, it's important to understand what other options are out there. And also, this will show us in this video, video number two, uh, why rules-based methods are not necessarily the right solution for a lot of different NER problems. In the next video, number three, I'm going to be introducing you to machine learning NER and kind of some of the basics. If you've never, ever heard of machine learning or used machine learning, don't worry. I'm going to presume no knowledge on the part of the listener or viewer. And if you want to learn more in depth about machine learning, I have a whole series on machine learning for the digital humanities. In this video, I'm just going to kind of run over the basics very quickly, just the core stuff that you need to know in order to use Python machine learning libraries uh, that rely on uh, machine learning practices. And the one that we're going to be using in this series is Spacey. I'm going to talk a lot about Spacey when I'm done going over the uh, series outline. Spacey is a state-of-the-art commercial uh, NLP software, so natural language processing framework. And one of the pipelines that it has is an NER pipeline. Now, it's very, very good at performing general named entity recognition. And in order to understand how Spacey works and why it's good at what it does, in video five, we're going to look under the hood of Spacey, see what makes it tick, and see what makes a machine learning model actually work, and what the pipeline looks in its directory. In video number six, we're going to do probably the most important thing in this whole series, we are going to identify the weaknesses in Spacey's NER model. Now, this is not a criticism of Spacey, not at all. Explosion AI, who made Spacey, is a fantastic company, and they have produced state-of-the-art models that they make available to the general public. This is a criticism of machine learning, natural language processing in general, and it shows the difficulties of performing the task. And it's going to come down to what we call uh, domain ambiguity or domain... Um, problems. In other words, a lot of machine learning models like Spaces are trained on a general web uh, data set, a general corpus from a few different areas of the web. However, when it comes to uh, using that on something that is very specific, such as law, healthcare, uh, Holocaust, South African history, you'll find that the Spacey model doesn't perform very well. And we're going to look at those weaknesses in video six. And then for the rest of the series, I'm going to show you how to overcome those problems through a few simple steps that can be a little daunting if you don't know how to do them. I'm going to break them down into very easy to understand steps and provide you with the code and solutions for solving those problems so that you can use NER on any set of corpora, corpora that you might have, whether it be uh, documents from the Holocaust, documents from uh, U.S. government, Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to train a custom model to perform much better on your data. And if you've used Spacey's NER and you've seen bad and inconsistent results in your data, then these steps are going to show you how to solve that problem. And we're going to break this down by introducing you to something called word vectors. If you don't know what those are now, you will definitely know what they are by the end of this series. Essentially, it's a mathematical representation of a word and its general understanding is in a large corpus of texts. And they are mathematical representations of a word's usage and context and frequency of usage. I'm going to explain all that in layman terms in video seven. Uh, then we're going to go into showing you how to generate your own custom word vectors using the Python library Gensim. This is going to be very important. So that in number nine, we're going to show you how to inject and import those custom word vectors into Spacey, which is going to increase your accuracy of NER substantially, even without training. However, tra training is important 
in machine learning, you need to train the Spacey model. And I'm going to show you how to do that in video 10. In video 11, we are going to start creating new entity labels in Spacey. So if you're looking at a, a corpus of texts that are important to your research, the 18 named labels uh, in Python or in uh, Spacey might not have... Uh, they might be applicable to your research, but there might be other labels that you want to assign. So if you look at the Holocaust like I do, uh, some labels that you might want to assign to uh, entities in a text might be things like concentration camps, uh, ghettos, etc. I'm going to show you how to create new labels in Spacey and train models on those new labels. And then in video 12, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily uh, generate a lot of training data that you can easily manually check. It's going to be a few simple tricks and tips that allow for you to do this process quickly so that you can cultivate a large training set that you can then in video 13, I'll show you how to do this, you can then use to train a new spacey NER model. I'm going to show you how to do that and then have something that you can be proud of, something that is actually deployable on a whole bunch of unseen data. So that's kind of the general course outline. Some of the key terminology that you're going to need to know going forward are is natural language processing. So natural language processing is a field of artificial intelligence and increasingly uh, more and more so. It's the idea of trying to get a computer to understand human uh, speech and human text. And NLP, as you can see from this great graph, is oftentimes used in conjunction with NLU or natural language understanding and ASR, automatic speech recognition. Because we're dealing strictly with texts, we are going to be looking at NLP from a textual point of view. In other words, we're not going to be dealing with human speech unless that human speech is represented in text form, such as transcribed audio from testimonies. Now, NLP is a general field in which you also have natural language understanding. And this is where you get things like a computer that can recognize sentiment of a text. So if a if a movie review is positive or negative, if a um, if a post should be flagged as inappropriate, therefore allowing the um, the administrator to see inappropriate uh, texts on their website uh, without having to actually read them. Uh, other things that it's used for is uh, data summarization. So summarizing summarizing texts. So if you have thousands and thousands of pages and you don't want to read them all, NLU is very useful for telling you what's in those thousands and thousands of pages. It'll give you a few paragraph summary of the text. Uh, that's NLU, and it falls under this umbrella of NLP. And this is where named entity recognition is in this whole strata of natural language processing. It is a technique or a task of natural language processing. It is the process by which we take a text, feed it to a computer, and extract a series of structured data from that text. Now, named entities can be anything from a date to a person's name to a particular location. NER is the process in which we extract that metadata from a text so that we can identify patterns in texts without having to read them. So when is this useful? Well, it's useful for scholars who have millions of pages of text that they cannot physically read in a single lifetime, much less the few months of research time needed to cultivate a pretty good um, uh, workflow for a scholarly uh, paper or article or the years it might take to write a scholarly book. So what do you do in these scenarios? Well, you automate certain tasks, and we can do this through natural language processing, and we can do this through specifically named entity recognition, which allows for a researcher to identify and target texts to uh, look at more closely or to extract names and entities from a bunch of texts to do distance reading. So that's kind of the general purpose of named entity recognition and where it fits into the overall umbrella of natural language processing. So this is part of a process that we called information extraction, i.e. So extracting information from a text to store it as structured data. Now, there's really kind of two different ways to do this. There is a machine learning approach, which is what this entire series is going to kind of focus on. And there's also a gazetteer or a rules-based method. A gazetteer I'm going to talk about more in the next video but it is essentially a dictionary, a list of types of named entities 
that fall under a specific category. So if you had a list of people's names, you would just go across an entire text. And if a word that is found in that text matches uh, a name that is in a list of names that you've got stored somewhere else, this gazetteer will flag it and tag it, and it will mark it as a named entity, specifically a person. As we are going to see, that is very useful for certain applications, but it has a noticeable weakness that we're going to talk about in the next video. The reason why natural language processing is such a difficult task, and named entity recognition even more so, is because of what we call linguistic ambiguity. So language is naturally ambiguous. It's what makes language beautiful. It's what allows us to write poetry, make jokes that are puns. Uh, it's a naturally ambiguous thing that we humans have. And it's what causes confusion and difficulty in training a computer to understand human speech. Things that we do without realizing, like taking in the context of a word, which we're going to see in the next video, uh, is actually incredibly difficult for a machine to do without a complex set of algorithms in place. And we're going to see throughout this entire series how linguistic ambiguity is going to be causing us to think about how we uh, approach named entity recognition and approach natural language process uh, processing generally. And what I'm really going to focus on in this series is a problem that I haven't really seen explored on YouTube, and it's a little difficult to find on the web in general, which is something called domain adaptation. This is the process by which we take existing models and we adapt them to a specific domain. Now, in this series, I'm going to be talking about uh, doing domain adaptation with Holocaust-specific data. So how do you um, get a model that has never really encountered Holocaust documents familiar to some degree with textual data that might be relevant to the Holocaust? And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. And if you take the methods I talk about in this series, you can apply them to any domain. The methods I'll show you will be fairly easy to um, modify and adjust by just using different corpora of texts that are specific to your research. The other thing that we should be familiar with is this idea of generalize. Now, this is something that is a common element of machine learning. You want to produce models that can generalize well. What is generalization? Generalization is the ability for a model to perform well on data that it has never seen before. So you cannot possibly give a machine learning model every single thing that has ever been written by mankind. It would be too large. In fact, somebody actually has done this. Um, the Those over at OpenAI have produced, you might have heard about it, GPT-2 and now GPT-3, which were trained on an immense corpus, the likes of which no other model has ever been trained on before. And the size is so large with GPT-3 that it cannot be run on a local machine. And the result was astounding. It allowed for the models to produce state-of-the-art human, uh, human-like intelligence with understanding of text and generating texts with very little to go on. It's a little difficult to explain. Not going to get it in, uh, get into it in this video. But generalization is the ability for the model to essentially generalize and assign named entities in our case to texts that it has never seen before. And this is the goal of any machine learning NER model. And like I said, during the course of this series, you're not going to have to know the intricacies of machine learning. Uh, you're not going to have to learn all of the concepts, but you're going to be able to use the power of machine learning. And that's because of the ease of use of uh, machine learning libraries in Python, specifically Spacey. Now, if you're performing NLP, you are probably going to be using one of two libraries in Python. You're going to be using Spacey or NLTK, the Natural Language Toolkit. The Natural Language Toolkit, NLTK, comes out of Stanford, and it's really kind of the standard in academia. Uh, it's got some problems, however. Uh, the main criticism of NLTK is the speed at which it processes texts. It takes a long time. And this is where Spacey comes in. Spacey is a commercial NLP. It's used for more big business tasks, big data tasks. And the reason for this is because it has a high accuracy rating with off-the-shelf models. It's really good at parsing texts and tagging texts. And if you're using standard non-domain specific data, it's really good at NER off-the-shelf. Really good. Um, 
the reason why people in the commercial world tend to use Spacey and not NLTK is because it scales well. It's really, really good at doing a lot of different tasks very, very quickly and efficiently. And in big business, you need stuff that can work efficiently and quickly. And the other library that we're going to be working with in this series is going to be a library called Jensen. Now, Jensen was originally designed for topic modeling, so identifying topics in a collection of texts or the topic of a single text. However, in order to perform that task, Jensen had to develop a system by which users could train what we call word vectors. I'm going to be talking about word vectors a whole bunch, and I think it's video number... Uh, number seven right here. And so if you want to jump ahead, uh, jump ahead to that video if it's already complete by the time you're watching this. But Jensum is very good and very efficient at training these word vectors. And we're going to be using word vectors a lot in this series. And we're going to be using Jensum specifically to generate word vectors on a giant corpus of domain specific texts, and then injecting those word vectors into Spacey to kind of take advantage of the best of both libraries. This might sound complicated, but if you follow me through this video series, each of these steps, take your time with them. I think you're going to find that the process isn't as scary and as daunting as it might seem. So that's the task before us. Hopefully this sounds fun to everybody. If you have some ideas or suggestions that you want to learn more about, let me know in the comments down below. But stick around for the next video, and we're going to talk about rules-based NER with Gazetteers and Python. So thanks for listening, and if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe down below.